Greetings, everyone. How are you? It is Sunday. And as we do these videos, I know that you may be watching this a year from now. You may be maybe all wiped out. Uh, there's a lot of plans to heat up the water. So I'm going to be here with you today for a short while. We're going to talk about safety, safety and protection. We've got this wonderful touchstone. Touchstones kind of have a little bit of an indention. Can you see when I, this is a carnelian stone that I picked up several years ago. And this is a touchstone. It's very different from what a lot of people call a fidget. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as usual, I, I like to bring you a hot tip. So one of the live streams on my Facebook page, one of my business pages, because I have been a self-employed business doing righteous works, good over evil, good over evil for the people for 37 years. Social media came along. I got onto that. I got onto Facebook in 2009. I had a professional space where I saw paying and donation clients. As a shaman and a medicine woman, I don't turn people away. Bless up, Kim. Good to see you, sis. I don't turn people away as a shaman in a medicine. I do not turn people away. So if you go over to my website at Naturally with Karen and you say that is way out of my range, I can't pay that, which is different than I don't want to pay her. Everything in the world is energy. I purchased two more books. <laughs> I now have a backlog of about 12 to 14 books, which I will be finishing this winter. And I read through about 184 pages of it last night until at 1.30 this morning, because I am morning. I said, that's it, I gotta go lay down. And I found myself tossing and turning, not because I was extremely disturbed, but because I thought, how am I, knowing what I know for all these years of all this devouring knowledge, these are both doctors that are now completely gone from earth out of a physical body, a physical vehicle. Think of this vehicle just like we think about another vehicle that you drive, like a, a car, a truck, an RV, a bus. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate seeing everyone here. How will I help the people to understand what has taken me 37 years? How do I really, not because people are stupid, not because they're dumb and they don't know, but it's kind of like years and years and years of learning to prepare food. Now I have a movement I know how to move in Rastafari language, right? Instead of, I know how to cook and prepare food. I'm not going to act like a Stepford wife. How I move with food, how I move with the plants, how I move with the animal, the kindred spirits, how I move with nature, and how I move with my medicine and my healing, how I move with learning how to come into dreadlocks that have never been touched by a crochet hook or anyone else's hands to help me you know, to make them. Nature makes them. Today, I'm going to share a hot tip with you. I'm going to put my little touchstone, my carnelian down. You can see it's a touchstone again because it's got the little groove in it. And this one is one that I that I use to help my my blood. It's red, right? Just like I eat pomegranates and watermelon, which helps with collagen. Don't be fooled. Watermelon, watermelon helps you with collagen, especially if you get it really close to the rind, okay? But today, one of the live streams on Facebook on my Naturally with Karen page, just like the name here, was me going into a place called Caribou Coffee in Canal Park, close to Mother Superior, Lake Superior. And I wanted to go in and get a reindeer drink that I made at home. And I wanted to get out and be amongst people. I don't want to be shut up in a house and I don't believe in lockdowns and I'll explain why. So as for you not to, you know, arbitrarily chalk me off as ignorant, irresponsible, uncaring, unkind, unaware. I'm none of those things. So I am a mother who's going through stages of grief 
who currently has chronic PTSD. And you know what? I'm doing my absolute best to handle all my business and do what I need to do and stay as positive. I do dip down here and there. I think that that's just going to be a natural part of going through the grief process. If someone murders your child, not just, you know, that someone, you know, absolutely with intention took them out, but I'm talking about the system itself that we're going to delve into today that tells you, informs you that they're creating a safe and protected situation, environment, situation, product, injection, medication, procedure, surgery. It's safe and it's going to protect you in the long run. You need to start questioning. So hot tip of the day, I like to give a hot tip because then you feel like, well, you didn't just get a lecture, you didn't just get preached at, which I hope that you never find that to be the case with me. But you're going to notice that my tone is a little rugged some days. And that's because you're not used to seeing a powerful woman. You're used to seeing like my other videos. There's over a hundred videos on my YouTube channel that were before I became enormously busted, adrenal exhausted to the core. And then on top of all of that, my child died from something that I knew he was being taken out by design, not just him, but hundreds of thousands with the opiate and opioid market. And our government has yet again ordered more than enough to harm several, most of our people. So your hot tip, I went over to Cub Foods. You may have where, like I had in California, Safeway, Albertsons. Um, you might be going to Whole Foods. You might be going to New Leaf, which is where I shopped in Santa Cruz, which is a Whole Foods market. Uh, and this, I know it's a cheapie. There are two for five bucks always this time of year by the Bigelow. And you see it's right there, it's hot cinnamon, okay? So I use, and you can see all of the pictures at my hair tissue mineral analysis page on Facebook. So if you go over there, um, to make this reindeer drink, just like yesterday I showed you the chai, I made another fresh batch of raw cashew milk with filtered water. I made an extra strong cup with two tea bags and I let it sit in there for like 10, 15 minutes till it was really as dark as possible and squeeze the tea bags. Then I poured all the tea in here and I showed you that it came up to about here. I added the rest of it with cashew milk. I added some vanilla. I added some raw honey. I put it in the blender because your blender, if it's powerful, will warm it all the way up for you. And mm, it's amazing. And it didn't cost me five or six or more dollars. I sprinkled some cinnamon on the top. It's absolutely delicious. So again, it is, I got this one and what was the other one I got? Oh, the peppermint bark which has got the chocolate and the peppermint and everything in it. So these are um, not quite the fancy tea that I buy all the time in terms of like, you know, organic and herbal and, you know, grown on pristine soil and all that, but it's kind of like a seasonal thing that I really enjoy. And cinnamon is going to warm, warm you up in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna go in here. All right. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that I did get my credential from the vaccine boot camp. So in addition to having 25 years now where I had made up my mind, I was going to do absolutely no vaccines for my child in 1995. My son's uh, father was like, oh, you're going to get him killed. You're already going to, you know, run. Our son had almost died because I was told repeatedly, despite relating that I had no breast changes during pregnancy which is a sign of adrenal exhaustion, is a sign of a high copper mother. It is a sign of a woman who's got severe thyroid deficiency. And I went ahead with the vaccines. I, I cut them off at some point and we did not do like the third of the MMR. You know, we didn't do many of the vaccines that were, were allegedly required. This is another mandate situation. 
But now, 25 years later, while I was also grieving for just mere months, I took a course that was five, minimum five hours of study per week for nine weeks, and typically about a two and sometimes longer live module every Thursday night, and this is my certificate. So vaccine boot camp, nine weeks of learning about the epidemiology. I've got pronounced about the epidemiology of several vaccines, and I've also got the, um, the knowledge that in fact, there were no double-blind placebo-controlled studies, meaning that you will take a select control group and you will inject an inert substance of like sugar water, you know, something like that, or just plain water. But in fact, in many of these, what happened was that they injected straight aluminum and they injected the vaccine. But Dr. Sherry Tenpenny related one story in the vaccine boot camp that there was a, a test group of a thousand babies. It might've been a hypothetical, but it doesn't matter. She said, this is what typically goes on. And if 300 of the thousand babies and toddlers are seriously disturbed, die, or are maimed for life, and you simply use your eraser and you erase those 300 out of the study, and now say your study was 700, <clears throat> this is unscrupulous behavior. It's unacceptable. If I'm going to make a soup, now that I've been preparing soups for 40 plus years, I was, you know, just a budding teenager, 12, 13, 14, when I was preparing food for my family. I was very parentified, which is a term that means that my parents um, relied on me like an adult by the age of 12. So, hey, Karen, we'll pay you $20 a week, which was kind of big money for someone who's like 12, 13 years old back in the mid 1970s. And you do the laundry, you take care of your brother who's six years younger, you will drop you off at the store and you do the grocery shopping and you plan. So these graduated in and by the age of 14, 13 and 14, I was at the grocery store with the big cart full for the family of four and taking it home. I was changing most of my brother's diapers. I was feeding him. I was going into the school and, and talking with the teachers about if there were problems by the time I was 12 years old. And this is not unusual because of what has happened to mother, causing her to be so busted down, so broken, so that, and so trained and so horrified just like what's being done to you today. You're being conditioned with facial identity coverings, facial diaperings, whatever you wanna call them, yeah. masking. You're being conditioned to obey, to demonstrate obedience, to conceal your identity so that you can be identified in other ways. And furthermore, what's very, very important is that your peers, from the littlest to the oldest elders, the elders that are not wise elders, but they're just olders, sad but true, medicated, starch stiff, mm -hmm. creaking, sitting in their lazy boys, watching TV with their remote control, glazed over. They've been abused by the system. And now in their mind, they're waiting to die. I look at this and I say, but you have an opportunity to turn your ship around because you're a ship and we're all in the ship together. So abusing mother, conditioning the people repeatedly over and over and over with each different level of domestication, using fear is precisely what this book speaks about virus mania. And I'm going to read to you the chapter names in case you didn't see the video where I read them once before. I'm going to read them to you. 
a table of contents. Introduction, Society Under the Spell of a One-Dimensional Microbe Theory. Chapter one, medicine presents a distorted picture of microbes. Microbes branded as scapegoats, fungi as in the forest, so it is in the human body. Bacteria at the beginning of all life. Viruses, are they lethal mini monsters? Question mark. The microbe hunters are seizing power. Pasteur and Cope, two of the many scientific cheats. Scurvy, Beriberi, and Pellegra, the microbe hunters as many defeats. Hippocrates von Pettenkofer, Bircher Benner, the wisdom of the body, clustering how to make an epidemic. Let's just use kind of a, a not so kind word, but we're in a cluster fuck right now. And a cluster fuck means that there is such a combination of things that are degenerating you that ultimately, if I was to read all the way through, the epilogue that was added to this book, because this book is over 20 years old and a new second edition came out July 31st, but the epilogue is about using Rock Hudson as the poster man, I won't say poster boy, he was a man, the poster man for HIV and AIDS. Dr. Sabi had already informed ones and ones before he also left the plantation that he had cured AIDS and that there was mucus in the head. That's absolutely true. And it coincides with the powerful work that I have done determining the level of edema and hydro and encephalitis with children up to all ages of, of people and animals for that matter. Fluid retention, based on the pandemic that is real, which is thyroid, based on the pandemic which is real, which is false evidence appearing real, which is broken down in this book. I've read hundreds and hundreds of books. The two books and the 184 pages that I read last night, I've got about four pages of notes. I have notes all over my house in piles on different subject matter. But as I'm taking them, I'm really taking voluminous amounts of information and knowledge. And I'm blending it just like I blended my reindeer drink, tea and nut milk and honey, cinnamon. I'm blending it into applying it with real people and dogs with my own healing and coming up with wisdom. If you wake up in what you call the morning, in the AM, the rise, and you're already tired, you take a shower and you're even more tired. You go to get dressed and you're tired. This is how I felt for over a year after my child died. I like to use the word transitioned. He came out of this vehicle and now he is spirit. Do you know the last two nights when I laid down and I've been taking my supplements every day, I've been walking every day, I've been getting out in the sunshine, even if it was negative four with some overalls, some Bernie overalls on that I've showed you. <clears throat> my son showed me two necklaces and a key with a number on it. Just last night, he showed me men with black jackets that had a diamond cut on the right side. I will not forget it. As I go about my day, I stay present to what ancestors have given to me. I go outside and I see the omens. When I took Fireboy out, and he's right down here on the floor right next to me. I had a pigeon that flew and circled like right in front of my face and went straight down. So over 50 some years, I'm 59. I have, wait, what was the pigeon animal spirit meaning again? Or what was this? I am 100% from age four, wolf, primary animal, my primary animal. There are others, but the, the foremost 
about my nature is wolf. And you'll know this about me because I am so kind and so loving, but I also bite and I bite really hard when I bite and I have expectations because much as the story, even though it's been disproven in recent years of the alpha wolf, as a 59 year old woman who's made it thus far without being duped into, you need blood pressure medication and acid reflux and cholesterol medication. You need medication to get through the grief. <clears throat> no, no thank you. And I see the people that are taking it and I see what's happening to you. I see friends I went to school and grew up with and they will never know then they will never know that when I see their pictures on Facebook, because we're miles and miles apart geographically on land, that their eyes look almost something like a Stepford wife, like the movie, The Stepford Wives. They're vacuous, they're vacant. They can't remember. They've got constant doctor's appointments. Their children, are exhibiting all the signs of enormous thyroid imbalance. But no one's hearing me. No one's hearing me say, maybe not no one, but very few compared to the whole are actually hearing me say, we can still turn the ship around. Are you safe? Are you protected? when your shopping malls now contain medical centers where stores used to be. Little medical urgent clinics are popping up everywhere. Oh, I know, but I mean, it's because we have so many people. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're not more safe and protected because you have more clinics. If the medical industry is going to continue to be sucking the life force energy out of the people, checking and treating and scanning and radiating and chemically blasting and everything is a warlike language, then in fact, we are not safe within it. And this is very provoking because it means that unlike Santa Cruz, where I came from, where I would bundle up my big, healthy, glowing, bronzed toddler. Okay, mama. We got into our Toyota van with the curtains on it and the carpet in there. So it was warm and cozy in our van, our white Toyota van. And we'd go to the herb room. It was right next to a, a littler, smaller version of a natural food store called the food bin was the herb room. I think it's still there. It was probably three minutes from our house. And he wasn't feeling good, you know. And licensed acupuncturists were behind the counter until about 11 p.m., 12 p.m., I don't remember. It was quite late. And they would say, okay, Zawa, stick out your tongue. He stick out his tongue. And they would check his pulse. And they would say, which animal do you think it is? And you go, I don't know, is it a snake pulse? Is it a this pulse, you know? And they made it child friendly. And then there were doors, drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers of Chinese and Western herbs. Around the same time, my son went to herbalist school with me, which was another whole tax return of about $2,500. I have invested all of my money or most of it into my education without stopping. I knew these days were coming. I was safe and protected going to the herb room, whether it was something to do with me or it was something to do with my son. We were safe and protected there. He would get the wild cherry bark syrup if he just kind of had, you know, an aspirated cough. We never had really major things to worry about. And now, in retrospect, knowing he had the large head circumference, it was in the 90-some percentile, when you go to the pediatric 
well baby and well toddler visits. When I look back at his infant picture and I look at many of yours, your, your children's infant, toddler, and children's pictures, what I see would be too much for you to know. There are packets, packets, P-A-C-K-E-T-S, packets of data that have been slipped in just like what's proposed and is starting to happen today. So since your ancestors so long ago were commandeered, they were commanded, like the Ten Commandments, man, men, commandments, different than the laws of Ma'at, mother-based is different than commandments, okay? Very, very different. I was safe at the Herb Room. I am not safe in a hospital. I am not safe with the majority of those that believe in checking and aggressively treating and killing it out of us. I'm not safe. Having concoctions placed into me that will, beyond a reasonable doubt, produce harm, changes, and potentially transhumanism, as has been alleged. It is for the thinking folks. It is not for those who want to be legalistic, as they started to say earlier, and are saying, can you pull the mask up above your nose? Can you put that back on? And a few times in my grief, grief is anger, anxiety, impatience, pissed off. If your child has an accident, skiing, hiking, in a car, on a bus, and the next new hijack hijacks your child, and for four years, you do everything in your power to protect your child, to be safe and protecting. And eventually your child says to you at 23, 24 years old, I think this thing's gonna take me down, mom. I don't want to, I don't wanna go. I want my life back. I go, no, it ain't. No, it isn't. No, we ain't letting it. And you don't sleep and you don't sleep and you don't sleep until finally you're about to just crack because you haven't slept for so long. And you, you try to reach out and other people, they haven't gone there yet. They don't understand it yet, they can't. And you say, learn, look at what I'm going through, hear this, because you're not safe and protected. This is a predatory, predatory system. So yes, when you are tired in the morning, you take a shower and you're more tired, you prepare food, you take the dogs out, you sweep your floor, you put away some of your clothes, you know, I've got a bucket of laundry over there that needs to get run today or tomorrow or the next day. I don't care, I got clean clothes to last me a little longer. I pull on yoga pants, I'm good. I often rewear my clothes if they're not stinky. I'm good, simple put the same thing on my face, pull my hair back with a ponytail holder, put on a hat, I'm good. I am low maintenance. I encourage you to become low maintenance. Don't be afraid to dreadlock your hair. Don't be afraid to say, no, I'm not going to take that thing. You're not putting it in me. As I read through the 184 pages, and I took five pages of notes front and back, and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna go finish the book, page after page. I learned something, I learned a lot of some things. The adrenals are opposite of the thymus gland. So you've got your hypothalamus, your thalamus, you've got the cortex over the brain, you've got the pituitary, you've got the amygdala, the limbic system, the hindbrain. 
you've got two eyes. You've got one brain, one thyroid, one heart, one pancreas. You are engineered. This body was engineered and you were slipped into it. And over and over and over and over for a damn good reason. It's in many of the songs that you sing. And as you listen to them carefully, you will hear. Listen to Pink Floyd, listen to Bob Marley, listen to Sade, listen to many and start to hear and you will hear. You'll hear it. Let every heart, wait, how's it go again? Let every heart prepare him room. Start to think. When I come into a very deep understanding about copper, more and more and more. This particular author that I read from, who's been gone for a couple of decades now at least, who I've never read from before, I immediately bought the ebook for $10.99, got it up on my Kindle and started reading it. Like I said, I couldn't go to sleep. I was like, oh my gosh. When your adrenals become so busted, you're so tired. You might be a baby, a toddler, a young child. I look at many of your children and I can see they came in busted, meaning out of energy, you're busted. When, let me go to the little spot here where it talks about cannabis because that was kind of something new too and I think that might benefit you. Give me just one second and I think I can find it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So people that use cannabis are nine times getting, experiencing nine times more cadmium which affects the sex organs especially, than cigarettes. Cadmium stimulates the adrenals. People that need cannabis are tired people. Tired people look for sugar, cigarettes, cannabis, drugs, and alcohol because they have disrupted energy producing systems of the body. That is huge. And I mean huge. Let's do it again. Sugar, cigarettes. Thank you for the yum, Kim. I have my glasses now. I can read it. We're out walking right now. Oh, nice. Yay. Thank you for the warm love. Sugar, cigarettes, cannabis, drugs, and alcohol are what people gravitate to and this is most of us. When we have disrupted energy producing systems of the body, what is an energy producing system of the body? Huh? The system, the liver's got to convert that cholesterol. It went into uh, many, many, many pages about how the medical industry will give you a drug because they check your blood, which is just a circulating highway, they call it. It only tells you what's going on right in that moment. So different than tissue testing with hair. They will check your blood and put you on that range again, the range finder, the insurance adjusted range finder, who's gonna fall into the medication gap. Funnel. And that cholesterol is elevating to protect you because your body is adrenally tired. And you may say, like I could easily say, well, it's because I'm 59. It's because of my age. Mm -hmm. 
if I go to the doctor, they'll say, yeah, I mean, you know, you're 59, you're going to be 60 next year in 2021. You know, that smile. So it's probably your cholesterol. This is what caused me to pull off of two or three of my really, really, really close college buddies. Number one, they kept falling for every guru that came into town and every new hyped out doctor that came on the TV. I was like, oh my gosh, come on guys, support the truth. These guys are players being pimped out. They got a couple little nuggets in there, but you can't really trust them. If I'm gonna make a soup, I'm going to add my filtered water first. Depending on what kind of soup I'm gonna make, usually mine are gonna be vegetable based. And on a rare occasion, I add sardines or some kind of fish. That's rare. And I know when my brain's like, you need to have that. So I'm sorry to upset you that most of my life in the last 37 years has been vegan eating. And I support vegan eating, and I certainly don't like the idea of thinking of catching fish out of the water and the harm and the hurt that they go through. But there are some occasions that I do, and I'm not going to be dishonest about it. Does that make sense? I'd rather be honest and be an open book and say, I'm hurting. I'm angry that my son was taken out. And if you lose your son or daughter, and you know with reasonable certainty that but for a series of unfortunate events, staging, designing, equipping doctors with a drug that they knew would hijack particular generations of people with predictable certainty. And you're not angry in your grief. There's something wrong with you. Because that, that's not going to be like, oh, I'm just kind of angry today. And then tomorrow, oh, all day. No, everything. I'm good. No, you're going to wake up. You're going to wonder what your life would be like today if your child were there. You're going to wonder what it'd be like if you were celebrating Christmas together, meaning having a meal together, exchanging a gift, keeping it simple, even if you don't really do Christmas, you were together. You're going to wonder about the plans that you had for May of 2020 like we did. Wow, we would have been out enjoying those plans right now. We would have said, fuck it, we're out the door. But for a system that's predatory. So because my journey is not two years, five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30, my adult medicine journey is now in 2021, it will be 37 years. I'm not a baby. I know that for a lot of people, I don't have a white lab rat jacket on and a stethoscope. I'm not pretending to be a doctor. I don't give medical advice. I don't tell you what to do. I'm a guide. When it comes to common sense, your habits, I can tell you what the lab tells you, your hair tissue test says, and I can expound on it. Most of our people are tired. They were never put into a safe category and they certainly were never protected. Mama couldn't even protect you because Mama now, due to a fake economy, e-con-a-me, a me, e, electronically, con, con job, a, me, economy. It's conned me into believing that I need to pay for life when I don't. When I'm just fine with one or two outfits of clothing, I'm just fine having a nomadic life. I'm just fine not having a big bill of $800 or more to pay for rent. I'm just fine starting to find others who also love, care, trust, and connect, who can communicate through this very difficult, wicked web of lies and domination. If I take an animal to the dog park, and let's just give a hypothetical here, okay? I take a wolf dog who's got wolf in his or her blood, and I take that dog to the dog park, and there's 50 dogs in the dog park, it's gonna be probably just fine. But what do dogs do? They all come up just like humans do, 
And you look at me and you go, yeah, she looks like she's still kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Look at her teeth. Yeah. Look at her hair. Her dreadlocks are kind of fucked up. And I'm going, that's okay. They're on the way. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. If I bring that dog, that wolf dog, the hybrid, we used to call them, to the dog park, and dogs do what they do in their form of communication, and they start sniffing butts. Immediately, they're going to smell what she or he eats. Hmm. She's got a leg up on me. She eats really, really good. Yeah. And they're going to smell something else that you don't operate with anymore. They're gonna smell our bloodline because they, the majority of them, nice doggies, are highly, highly, highly domesticated. Look at their lifespan, 14, 15 years old, and we're like, whoa, that dog was old. We do the same thing with humans. Whoa, she lived a nice long life. Yeah, she was like 80 years old when she died. Hands on the hip. I'm going, you gotta be freaking joking. No, 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 no. She hadn't even come to being a really highly seasoned wise woman crone yet before she was removed from the plantation. So once you start to understand the sodium and potassium, what the calcium does, the calcium puts a break on certain things in the body when things start to go out of control. You know when to use it, what to look for, when it's low, low, it's high, what the ratio is, what it means when it's over 25 to 1 with the magnesium, what the calcium to the, the phosphorus range means and how that has to do with your oxidation. And you start to look at all these different things, you're like, this is one heck of a way to really understand what's going on with you. Don't expect to be like, okay, sweetie pie, I'm the magic fairy waving my wand. You've got one consultation and we're going to fix you all the way up in 30 minutes. No, because of what I said earlier, and I know you won't like this, you're a clusterfuck and you're living in your own bubble. And many of you are mad about it. You're rigid. You're controlling your OCD, even though no one's ever diagnosed you, you are obsessive compulsive. You do the same crap every day in your litter box. It's very difficult for you to get creative because a lot of you, and you're not gonna absolutely see it on your hair tissue test, have got a whole big bunch of copper stuck in your liver, in your brain, different areas of the body. It's gotta get mobilizing, and it can take me helping you or you helping you up to two years to get that to even start moving so that you will see it on the test. If, and I'm gonna conclude here, I know we're going way into 45 minutes. I'm looking at the little uh, stop the, the time thing on the top here. If you go into the hospital and they're like, we're going to keep you for a couple of nights, kind of run some more tests. I mean, you do seem like you're not really stable. You've heard this. If you haven't heard it, you've heard it for others that you've become aware of. I mean, your parents are sitting over there. Let's just keep everything cool. Let's just keep sitting in our lazy boys. Let's not, let's not rock the boat. Let's not go out and walk too much. Let's not do too much. Let's not change too much. We've already been eating this, this screwed up diet for how long we're just going to keep doing it. These people have become monsters. I look at them and that's what I see. They look like monsters to me. They, to you, that's mom and dad. To me, I look at the pictures and they look like monsters. Children see them as monsters. They don't look human. They look deranged with big eyes behind glasses. And, you know, I look deranged right now. I get it. I am. The clay of my body, my face, my whole body is going to change under enormous pressure and grief and stress. And there isn't one of us right now that isn't living in fear. 
with all of the evidence, the false evidence, all of the evidence that they keep pushing. You can't even go and buy something. I bought a uh, floor sleeping mat last night. I'm like, I'm tired of moving my blankets in and out. They're big and heavy. I got a lot going on. I want to simplify down. I also want to put it in my bus. A little over a hundred bucks. I don't buy a bed. I don't have a dresser. I don't, you know, I'm going to have a floor sleeping mat that I can fold up, or winds up. I can put it and take it with me and it's what I'm going to sleep on. And it's got a waterproof liner on the bottom of it. Nope. I looked at it. I slept on the idea for a couple of days. I don't just spend money carelessly. I bought it last night. And I'm having it shipped. I'm going to methodically think through because my clay is going to reflect the stress that I go through. So this is why the wicked witch with the green face and the big wart on her nose was how they hammered and hammered and hammered on women, making them concubines and chattel, placing them for sale. And you seeing the false evidence and the real evidence of other women being stretched and tortured and impaled and medically experimented and inhumanely treated and on and on and on, and also her children. So for over 2000 years, as you celebrate the same system that did this, tyranny, then the tyranny is still making its way. What does Pink Floyd say? Welcome to the machine. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. The faster you stand up with your dreadlocks, your crown of resistance, the more you stand up and say no. The more you educate others, the more you do a live stream Two minutes in a store, hey, you know, walk around the store. No, I these two holes, like Nas says with, with Damien Marley, these two holes I used to breathe. There's an agenda, a plan to heat up the water. You can feel it and I can feel it. The water smells different. It feels different. It tastes different. It's very metallic. The clouds look different. They are water. They're cumulus. The people look different. They're scared. As I started to say, I go to a website, everything's got you know the COVID information on it. Are you safe and protected? Are you going to become more safe and protected? Did you question what safe and protected means? Because as I said, more Medical centers like Essentia going into the Duluth Miller Hill Mall. Bigger and better hospitals being built and people go, yes, we're getting a bigger and a better hospital. And I go, to do what? I could see if the whole thing was an emergency room and people were out there having unbelievable numbers of accidents. Where's the juicer? on every floor of the hospital so you can impart enzymes and nutrients right away that get right into the bloodstream. Where is it? Where's the healthy food? Where on the COVID wards, alleged COVID wards, are the intravenous vitamin C, the ozone therapy of which I've studied for years? The nebulizing, the iodine, the food grade hydrogen peroxide. Where, where, where is the love? Where is the love? Love comes when mama is put back into place. Mama cannot be a 20, 30, 40, even 50 something who's green, who doesn't understand, who hasn't walked through a hot fire. Mama has got to go up and it's going to be one hell of a job. And mama, just like Nana, Nanny of the Maroons, like Harriet Tubman, like Rosa Parks, 
like Francis Farmer, like so, so, so I could keep going. They paid a price to help you, to show a mode de resistance. Viva la raza. Hmm? Okay. I'm back up. I'm getting up and up and up and up and up. You have bars like a battery. You are a battery, <laughs> copper top. You're working for them. Let's turn the ship around and start having real life again. I'm gonna say it over and over and over and it's mine, so please attribute me when you repeat it. Our immunity is in the soil. Our ancestors were buried in the soil. Our shit goes into the soil. Our decomposition of our way of life is in the soil. The fungi and the mycelium compost, compost into the soil. You should be shitting seeds and real food and real cinnamon. We don't need grocery stores. We need real life. We don't need imitation. We need real life. The children need to feel safe and protected. When I was speaking with my son's friend, a friend of his, Tanner, the other night for almost two hours, said, look at what's going on with the young people. They go to the doctor and they're given 10 to 12 different medications. Xanax, Seroquel, Tramadol. What the hell? Those buildings that you walk into, those hospitals with tunnels underneath are making a lot of money. They're making a killing. You know, stand up and support what you want. Be real. If you don't know what real is, get yourself a copy. Find it online or you used to be able to go out and have a human experience, but not with the agenda they have planned. Starting, uh, that's why the key that I saw in the dream had the number 121 on it. Keep that in mind. Keep it in mind the golden key and the two necklaces, one of amber stones, the other of clear cubed quartz and the jacket, the black jackets that they all wore with the diamond on the right side. Okay, I love you all. I hope that you will take a moment to give a thumbs up on the video, that you'll subscribe, that you'll share this that you'll help other people to come here so that I can take my phone out and, and do live streams on the phone, not just in my home. I love you dearly. I'm gonna go back to finishing that book. It's 300 some pages and that's what I'm gonna do. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. From my home, look at Luna. <laughs> But next to the relaxed blanket, that's what it says over there. And little Pablo's under the little, whoops. That's my sleeping pile, which I said I bought the mat after all these years of floor sleeping, many, many years. Pablo's under the pile over there. And fire is over here, right next to the floor. There he is. I'm gonna finish my hot cinnamon drink. You have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for joining me.